Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this German propaganda company cameraman. This is a 28mm scale metal figure by Warlord Games, and if you would like to purchase one of these yourself or any other Warlord product, it would be awesome if you did so with my Warlord affiliate link, which you will find in the description below. This figure was painted to go with and painted partially alongside the Warlord Steiner that I painted recently. Though he is wearing an entirely green uniform, so he's a bit different to both Steiner and my Warlord Blitz Germans, but that's fine by me. As with Steiner, I've decided to only brush paint this model, except for primer and clear coats. Speaking of primer, I primed the figure black using Steinal Res. It's a bit hard to see all the detail on camera if it's all black, but that is really a minor problem because colour is going to be added right now. Vallejo Model Colour German Field Grey is what I use to base coat the uniform. As you can hopefully see, I'm applying this all over the uniform bits. At this point it doesn't really matter if you get it on the other areas, but it's still good practice to try painting this only where you want it anyway. Of course, don't forget the hat. It's important. You can't forget the hat. Then I made a mix of roughly half field grey and half buff, which I dry brushed onto the uniform quite lightly, and I'm mostly brushing it downwards. If I were to airbrush this highlight, it would be from almost directly above the model. It's not quite the same with a brush, but it's worked quite well. You can see that there is some highlighting, but it's kind of subdued, which is pretty much what I want. Next, it's time for the skin. I base coated this with AK Interactive Base Flesh, which does make sense. I painted this onto all of the exposed flesh areas, which also makes sense. Of course, now I have to be careful to avoid getting this on the uniform if I want to avoid having to do touch-ups, but I suppose that goes for pretty much any model really. I follow that with AK Interactive Shadow Flesh, which goes where you want the shadows. I know, that's a crazy notion, but come with me on this adventure. If you are like me, you want shadows in the recesses, like between the fingers, and on the underside of any skin areas. This does of course assume that the light is coming from above. I then highlight with AK Interactive Light Flesh. As you might guess, this is applied more or less opposite to the shadow colour, and I'm trying to be pretty light with this and not go overboard. I follow this with even further highlights using AK Interactive Highlight Flesh, which the name would suggest is pretty good for highlighting. Though as with Steiner, I wasn't totally satisfied with this. So I applied Army Painter Flesh Wash, which was diluted roughly two parts wash to one part water, though I didn't film it because I'm a ding dong. I wasn't totally satisfied with how this looked either, so I applied a gentle dry brushing with the AK Interactive Light Flesh. I was being very careful to avoid the uniform with this, and I did manage to do so pretty well. Most of the excess went onto the camera, and that is going to be a lot easier to deal with than if it had gone onto the uniform. I think it looks pretty decent. Not quite so realistic close up, but that's not the purpose of this model. It will look pretty good at a distance. Next it's time to paint the camera bag, or at least I assume that's the bag for the camera. I base coated this with Vallejo model colour Middlestone. I used the images from the Warlord store page as inspiration for this. I'm not sure how historically accurate this is, but I thought the bag looked interesting in a yellow sandy colour, and it does break up the model a bit as well. Warlord's example didn't have the strap painted the same colour as the rest of the bag, but I figured I would do that because why not? It also helps break up the solid uniform colour on the other side as well. It did look a little bit too clean for my tastes, so I applied some undiluted Army Painter Soft Tone. I do this kind of messily, which is okay, it's not going to be a final coat or anything, and I will get back to that bag in a bit. But now it's time for hair. I base coat this quite carefully with Vallejo Model Color German Camouflage Medium Brown, because who doesn't want camouflage hair? Obviously I'm trying to avoid getting this on both the flesh and the uniform, so going slowly and carefully is probably the best way to end up with a good result. Then I figured why not darken it down a bit with some undiluted army painter strong tone, for good strong hair. Wait, this isn't a Soviet figure, he just has regular German strong hair. 
whatever that means. Anyway, this ended up looking a little bit dark and kind of like chocolate. While chocolate is pretty delicious, you don't really want to wear it on your head. Well, I don't, and neither does this guy. So I went back over it quite lightly with the base colour. This was applied almost like a dry brushing, just leaving a bit of the darker colour in the recesses. Then, back to the bag. I very gently dry brushed the bag with Vallejo model colour Middlestone, which is what I based it with. I used my crappy small dry brush here, which doesn't get quite as nice a result as the makeup brush I use on bigger areas, but it does the job well enough. For the strap I used a regular brush, but I thinned the paint out a bit more than normal and applied it lightly. I did this hoping it wouldn't totally obscure the dirty layer beneath, and it seems to have worked well enough. I then used Model Air Black to paint all of the, well, black areas. That makes sense, right? Those are predominantly the boots, which are very simple to paint, and the camera, which will need a little bit more care to avoid accidentally painting the figure's face and hat. I would say that it's a very good idea to avoid doing that. I was kind of surprised that I managed to do this without getting any black on the skin. I think it looks good, and it actually kind of looks like it's already been highlighted, but that's just the reflection of the bright lights I use. I also use the Model Air Black to paint the belt. I'm not sure this totally needs to be in black, but I figured why not. This is pretty simple to do. I used Model Colour London Grey and my small dry brush again to very gently highlight the boots. These are meant to be black, but having them solid black makes them look a bit flat. Still, I'm trying to be very light with this. Doing it too heavily would ruin the look. I did the same thing on the camera. I'm also going fairly lightly here for the same reason as with the boots. Also being very careful to avoid the face. I highlighted the belt the same way as I did the bag strap with a regular brush and some very, very thinned out London grey. I then took some model colour gunmetal and painted the belt buckle. This is probably a bit more shiny than your average infantryman would want on him, but like Steiner, I figured this guy might be a bit special. Plus it adds interest. As a final touch, I apply a tiny bit of army painter strong tone along the edges of the belt, along where the hair meets the hat, and a couple of areas around the camera bag. I figured this would add a bit of shadow and just make things look like they have a bit more depth. I applied a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, and our propaganda company cameraman is complete and ready to make films. Maybe not entirely truthful films being a propaganda man, but films nonetheless. When editing this, it occurred to me that it might look cool to add some gloss varnish to the front of the camera to represent the shine of the lens, but clearly I haven't done that yet. At any rate, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I'm not entirely sure if there are any special rules or ways to use this figure in games of bolt action, but my intention is to place this figure with the commander in my German forces, which will be Steiner, who I painted a few weeks ago, and there'll be a link to that in the description. Sure, he doesn't have any weapons modelled on him, unless you count the camera as a giant club, but that's okay. I like this idea because it will be clear who's in command and who his buddy is, which I imagine would be good when they're near friendly squads. At least that's how it works in my head. Also, I feel like I could have some fun with him when doing another solo battle report, which I will do one day. If you've been around for a while, you probably know that I'm not the biggest fan of painting figures, but doing them one at a time well, kind of two at a time as I painted the flesh and uniform on this figure at the same time as I did with Steiner. What I'm getting at is I think I prefer painting figures one or two at a time, rather than a whole unit at a time, if that makes any sense. It is definitely less efficient, but I find it more enjoyable. I do have some other similar metal figures from Warlord to paint for my Soviet force, and I'm actually feeling pretty motivated to do them. Not right away, but soon. I guess I'm starting to waffle a bit. What I'm trying to say is I enjoyed painting this figure, and I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Of course, nothing I've done in this video is really revolutionary or anything like that, but I do hope there's something here that can help somebody, if only in inspiring you to paint something. If you want to know what colours I've used here without having to skip back through the video, there will be a list of colours I've used in the description below. So, what do you think of this fellow? Does your German army include a cameraman? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you have some cool pictures of your own work, feel free to come share with us over on Discord. If you want one of these propaganda company cameramen for yourself, or anything else Warlord offers, there's a link to Warlord's site using my affiliate link, and I would appreciate it if you guys used it when making purchases there. You don't have to, but it would be nice. It's yet another part of the Help Herbert Not Starve to Death initiative. If you haven't already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, or just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. Links to all of those things are in the description below. And if you're feeling really helpful, share this video with your friends or anybody you think might get something out of it. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.